Get the most out of your gold with today's free to play draft guide for Theros Beyond Death for beginners. Enjoy. Hey everybody, welcome back. Thanks for taking the time to check out Hello Good Game. Today we are playing a ranked draft Theros Beyond Death. We're going through everything you need to know as a new free to play player. We want to get the most out of our gold. Obviously this costs 5,000 to enter. So we really want to be converting that gold to gems at an efficient rate. Again, if you've not checked out my free to play farming guide yet, where we go through how to best convert your time into cards, be sure to check out the link in the description below. We're going to have a video on that for you guys. Today, we're not going to get into any matches, but we are going to get you guys set up to get into some matches, right? So we're going to download MTG Arena Tool. We're going to install it. We're going to get the overlays up and running for you guys. We're going to talk about what the overlays are and what they do, how they're going to help you. And then we're going to talk about how to use them during the game. We're also going to touch on our farming guide again. We do have that spreadsheet if you've been following along. If not, I'm going to put a link in the description for the video that's going to send you there. So this is the best way to farm as a free to play player and the most efficient way to do it. So we're gonna need to be drafting with our spreadsheet open. We're gonna go through that as well while we're doing our picks with the draft helper as an assist tool. And we're gonna review our archetypes and synergies for the set in Theros Beyond Death, just so you guys do have a, a recap on that a little bit. And again, we do have another video going in depth on all of these topics, so you can do a deep dive there if you want, uh, I really recommend it just so you familiarize yourself with the different archetypes because you not only need to know what you want to play and what's available to you, you need to be able to distinguish what your opponent's playing so you can better handle those threats uh, ahead of time, right? So a lot in this video, you guys. Buckle in. Let's get into it. you guys first things first head over to mtgarenatool.com and download this attachment if you don't want to do a download i know you can use untapped.gg it's similar i just don't know the settings and it runs in your web browser so no download required there however these are the settings i'm familiar with so this is what we're going to use today and there are also many other trackers as well so make sure to explore them if you have the time find that one that works really good for you so go ahead and download this we're going to install it and open it up. Okay, so while this is downloading, head back into your MTG Arena client, go to your settings, that's just the gear in the top right. You want to go to account and then detailed logs. You see this? It's about second from the bottom, detailed logs, plugin support. So what we're downloading is actually a plugin. So you have to tell your client that you want to support that. So MTG Arena is going to allow them to read your log files. So just go ahead and make sure that box has got a check mark through it. And then we can go back, make sure our download's done and install MTG Arena Tool. The next thing we wanna do is open up our tracking spreadsheet. If you don't have this yet, don't worry. I have a link in the description uh, to a video where I break it down completely so you can familiarize yourself with that. There's also a large article that goes behind this uh, spreadsheet because there is a lot of math involved. So you're gonna to wanna to have this open when you're doing your picks so you can fill it in because we are drafting our rares, ideally, if you're looking to farm efficiently. If not, go ahead, draft whatever. Um, but there's a good chance that the rares are also gonna be the best cards in the draft, unless you have four of them. And then again, maybe pick an uncommon you don't have, right? Just uh, fill that collection out as best you can. So again, open up this spreadsheet if you don't have it go ahead and grab it from the link in the description. You can pause this video and watch that video if you want to familiarize yourself with it. Uh, it won't take long. And again, moving on to our next step. Okay, you guys, our last step before we start opening these packs wide open is to familiarize ourselves with Theros Beyond Death Draft Limited. So normally I like to read a draft guide and a sealed guide. Uh, we just worked our way through sealed, but now we're working our way through draft. Uh, so we've spent up all our gems. We've got as many cards as we can, but we've still got that gold saved up. So we're gonna drain it into our drafts and try to farm out the rest of our set as best we can, which means trying to get as many wins as we can, which means being more informed than your opponent. So I'm gonna have a link to this page in the description below. Go ahead, give it a quick read through. Uh, it's an article by Compulsion. Some of you may have seen him on our channel before. He's a great guy and he is an expert limited player. This guy kills drafts, you guys. So he's got a lot of great information here. Uh, I really recommend that you just give this article 
uh, I'll read through. So again, link in the description below. We have MTG Arena Tool. We have our spreadsheet. We've got logs enabled for MTG Arena Tool. We've got our overlays enabled. We've familiarized ourselves with the limited set at hand. Now let's go ahead, open these packs, and we're gonna look at how the draft helper works. All right, let's open up these packs and see how the draft helper works. You'll immediately see it up on the left-hand side of your screen. You can click the button to resize it and move it all around and just click it again to lock it in place. So we're gonna see a list of the cards within the pack we've just opened, and it's gonna rank them from best to worst. We have S or A plus down to like a D minus or an F, I'm not sure. Uh, it is alphabetical grading though, right? And you'll see Nightmare Shepherd is not only a rare, but it is an A plus. So the first thing we need to do is go back to our spreadsheet. Now that we have our spreadsheet up, we're looking for Nightmare Shepherd. It is a rare. Let's go ahead and take a peek, scrolling down to N. Nightmare Shepherd, we already have four of, so it's not a requirement for us to take Nightmare Shepherd at this point. If we don't want to work it into our deck, we could go ahead and take a common or uncommon that we don't have instead that we know we like. However, I do think Nightmare Shepherd is gonna be really fun to build around, so I'm gonna go ahead and snag that. And again, we're gonna repeat that same process until all of our packs are opened. Every time we see a rare or a mythic rare, we're pulling up that spreadsheet, we're finding it, we're seeing if we have four copies. If we don't, we take it and we adjust our number. If you've watched the farming guide, you're gonna learn how that will decrease the amount of packs you're gonna need and increase the amount of rares you come out with due to the five card protection rule. So let's speed through this process and take a look at our deck. Okay, you guys, we've picked all our cards. We've gone into our spreadsheet. We were lucky enough to get two rares we didn't have. We had four Nightmare Shepherds, but we chose to take them anyways. We got a Temple of Abandon and an Erebos Intervention. So a couple of really cool rares, especially the land. I say this all the time. As a new player, if you're gonna spend rare wild cards, they should be on rare lands. That's gonna open up so many different archetypes that are now viable for you to play because you're more consistent, you're more aggro, and uh, it's just a lot more fun to not be playing with tapped lands, you guys. You're really gonna get that win rate up, and that's the most important part. So let's go ahead, shape the deck, and then I'll explain my thought process once we're all wrapped up. All right, you guys, we're done building the deck. It was actually a pretty easy process. I decided early on I was gonna go black because of our first pick, which was Nightmare Shepherd, and then our following picks really just kind of to support that. We got Erebos Intervention, uh, Elspeth's Nightmare, Underworld Charger, things like this that really help support it. And then obviously our Shepherd are an enemy of enlightenment as well for flying. So I think we're gonna have that good late game reach with flying and then hopefully enough confusion during the beginning to get us through there. A few of the other synergies I've decided to include in the deck were Black Devotion and Green Black Escape. So we do have a couple of Green Black Mill cards. Aliquate of Affliction is gonna take the top two from our library into the graveyard, and then we get to take a permanent from our graveyard to our hand. So that's a nice late game drop to get one of our big creatures back. Also, the Binding of Titans does a similar thing, but we're bringing a land back this time. And then we have Black Devotion for Blight Breath Cataplees, where a creature gets minus X minus X equal to your devotion. So a couple really cool things here. We have a little bit of removal. Those flyers like we talked about with Scavenging Harpy, Nightmare Shepherd, Enemy of Enlightenment. And then again, a couple of enchantments to get us going because the set is filled with enchantments, you guys. It's almost impossible to build a deck without them. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you are more confident going into your drafts now and you're gonna get those wins, you guys. This is really gonna help you. So we did the MTG Arena tool. We enabled our logs. We got our spreadsheet going. We enabled our overlays for the draft pick. We overviewed the synergies and archetypes. We built our deck. We looked at it. As far as mana curve goes here, it is nice and slow. Uh, a nice ramp deck. You'll see it building there and then really no five drops and like that one six drop here, those two six drops. So uh, a little bit of late game, but I think we're gonna get there. I hope you enjoy this deck. Maybe it gives you some ideas in the decks you're gonna build. But again, as long as you're reviewing the synergies and archetypes video with the link down below in the description, I think you're gonna do just fine. 
So let me know what you thought of this. This is definitely something we can do more of if it helped you. I definitely think it did. It even helped me over viewing these things again, right? Thanks for watching, you guys. I really appreciate it. A couple of reminders before we go. We are live on Twitch every morning, 6 a.m. PST. So we'd love to have you join the conversation there. You can also jump into our Discord link below. If you have any questions, you want to talk about anything, there's a large community of us there who are super friendly, super helpful, and would love to help you out. So thanks for watching. We'll see you all tomorrow. Take care.